I'm a bit wimpish now because it really is pouring down outside. So we we come. We're still inside. This is Kate. She's the volunteer and training manager yep. here at the community farm, yeah. uh, which is uh, a great asset to the city, isn't it? I mean, I can't imagine how many school children have visited here over the years. Yeah, it's absolutely incredible. We've got some fantastic projects that engage um, young volunteers on a Saturday, adult volunteers um, on a Thursday, and youth volunteers on a Tuesday. So there's something going on all of the time um, that engages people in the life of a real working farm, and that can be everything from growing produce to cooking produce to feeding animals that will eventually go into the freezer. So, you know, there's a whole range of work here around food that really helps people feel good about themselves. And you are on the edge of some of the, the largest areas of social housing in the city and county of Swansea. Some great schools there, some great children there, great families, yeah. but you are on an area that maybe the children don't get a chance to visit those Gower farms. I remember being in Harvard Junior Comprehensive School. We were taken down to the Gower. We were taken and spent a day on a farm there. Children today don't always get those opportunities. No, and you know, involvement in farming is just one of those things that's really, really good for you because actually sometimes you've got to do horrible jobs, but you've got to push through it. Sometimes you've got to you know, understand the body language of an animal and, and communicate with it. Um, or, you know, there's, there's all sorts of things that need to happen here that build lots and lots of life skills, especially around kind of resilience and, and um, communication uh, and a lot of children would miss out on that if we weren't here so it's incredible but there are you know there are lots of people in this area who just lack opportunities to do something or to give something back to their community and, and that's what this place provides and we find it has massive massive impact not only does it help us because we can make this place free to the public to visit but it also helps them grow as people overcome depression overcome periods of illness um, or just feel less isolated in their communities during those tough times where you weren't really sure whether next pound was going to come from yeah. i came here with uh, with lee trendle Who's i think that? That, sorry i'm a bluebird oh get away <laughs> they named two of the two of the pigs kevin trends which i think was only a day thing but They're probably uh, in the freezer now yes, Kev. Yeah. <laughs> don't don't <laughs> No, no, no. My, my, my wife's that was her first visit here, but the, the, everybody was like totally stunned that you were even in that position. Yeah. No one could possibly understand why, when all that you do in the community, all the service you bring on a health, on an education level, on a social services level, why anybody would not want to fund this place and keep it going and and make it even bigger. Yeah. I think that's what people don't understand about us is we're not part of a council, we're not part of core services, um, we are an independent charity so every scrap of money we get in we do either through earning it, writing funding bids, um, so that it's not like someone somewhere is, is giving out money for projects like this, you know we have to fight for every pound that we get in um, and yeah people come here thinking that we're something slightly different so it's quite interesting from that point of view um, but no there's massive value in what we do, I mean for every single person who might get back into work after involving in a project like this, there's evidence to show that it saves the local economy seven and a half thousand pound a year each. Wow. You know, so you multiply that by all the people who are getting into work after having their confidence increased in a place like this. I mean, the cost savings are absolutely amazing. But at the moment, the way services are and the way funding is, is that they can only see the cost of something and not the value of it. There's no money for preventative health strategies or preventative community strategies. Now we all know that if there was, we wouldn't get to this stage. In, in a lot of in a lot of places but um, we're waiting till people reach crisis point and we're having to deal with that rather than dealing with it early on when they, the, the outcomes could be much better I know from my own business that casting directors and theatre producers look at a CV and if they see gaps that kind of alerts them you know and they would rather see uh, um, a, a non-funded non-salaried position fill there fill in that gap and I guess it's this it's the same with any CV you know voluntary work during a period of unemployment does impress uh, a future employer it does impress that you, you've made the effort you, you're not going to you're not going you're going to use your time wisely and voluntary work says so much about a person exactly. and yeah. it's good for job prospects yeah I mean there's just it shows a willingness you know it shows a willingness to do something productive with your time it shows engagement in learning all sorts of different skills especially in a place like this you could be wrestling a sheep one minute you know clipping its feet the next injecting a pig you know whatever you could be doing hundreds of different things in a day so you're constantly learning new skills um, so so no, I think people do look upon volunteering as a really good thing for employability. But what we find is a lot of our volunteers come here at a point in their lives when they've almost given up. Yeah. And it's actually joining here, finding a family and a community that want 
you know, put you on an equal basis with them, um, teach you new skills, but also value what you bring and, and the time that you're giving just in, improves, especially for men, it just improves their health and well-being so much. Um, you know, male mental health is a massive issue because men don't like to talk face to face. You're doing it now, but really, it'd be much better if we were putting up a fence together and we were talking that way. So, for, me, for men, this is the perfect approach to improving mental health and creating um, a network of friends. So, if you want more information about the work of the community farm, if you'd like to get involved as a volunteer or just like come here on one of those uh, three days, uh, half term is coming up. So, maybe you'd like to bring the, the, the children here. I'm sure there's lots going on here over the next few days. This young lady now is going to tell you how to do it, how they can get more information. One of the best ways of staying in touch is actually just to add us on Facebook and to watch our pictures and announcements that way. Um, we have a website which is www.swanseacommunityfarm.org.uk. We've got a phone number, 578384. Um, but really, you know, just follow us on social media, pop down when you can and, um, you know, donate if you want, become a member or find out how getting involved in volunteering can in improve your life if you're feeling like that would be a good idea. Either way, just it's your farm pop down and use it Gordon the plan was in my head to talk about the honey cake that you had made uh -huh. and had given me but unfortunately it's all gone pear shaped because I've eaten honey cake it's gone but it was delicious well thank you we, we made that for the event that we had on uh, Sunday the farmers market so I basically got honey from our own hives um, and uh, eggs from next door. And it's just basically honey, eggs, sugar, um, self-raising flour, and a little bit of butter. Fantastic. So you go out to farmers markets with products from the farm? Uh, no, it's just that we had a product, product you market. You had one here? We had one here. Wow. So we were selling our own honey, our own jams, meat from our own animals, and there was other people selling kimchi, jams, so there was an Indian lady selling her samosas and things. And is that a regular event? Or? It was the first one this year. Um, it's the first one we've ever done. I believe it was because um, one of the ladies in charge here looked around and there wasn't a farmer's market on on that specific Sunday, because there's always one in Mumbles. Yes, yeah, one in, yeah, yeah. So they just decided to, to try and give it a go. Just a shame that Storm Brian came came through with the marquee and it was a bit windy and wet. It's quiet today, so I guess you're cooking with the staff and the volunteers in mind, do you? Well, we've, we've got some people, some young children on the farm that are here uh, on a, like a work experience. So I've got Sean in the kitchen helping me today. So we're just making some roast potatoes, Yorkshire puddings, uh, sausages from the farm, onion gravy. And then for the vegetarians, we've made a five bean chili. So it's just given the kids some experience. I mean, yeah. they, they, some of them have never worked in a, a proper kitchen before. So it's just given them, showing them the knife skills and just basic skills. And, what and, and are you staff here? Uh, yes, I am, a st I am staff and I'm a volunteer as yeah. well. And I found that, you know, that people work here so many days a week, but when they're not staff here, they come in as volunteers. Well, tomorrow I'm going to be coming in because the beehives need to be sorted out for winter. So I, I, I look after the bees on a volunteer basis because some of the bees are mine. And I've got to put mouse guards on the front. So that basically the entrance has got quite a big hole. And in the wintertime, mice try and get into the hive to eat the honey and eat the bees. So I've got the special guard that goes on the front to stop the mice getting in. Wow. So that needs to be done tomorrow. It's all very complicated, isn't it? Yeah. Do you enjoy it here? Well, I've been here now for seven years. Yeah. You enjoy it, don't yes. you? Yeah, my name's up on the wall. I'm one of the volunteers that actually changed this. Was a, this was a barn, and we had money, and we, we built this. So I came in, I did the, the plumbing work along there, never done any plumbing work before, so I was taught how to do that. I did some of the tiling, some of the plastering. Again, I, I make cakes with plastering, I thought was, <laughs> instead of put, putting it on the cake this way, you're putting it on, this, on the ceiling this way, so it's a... Fantastic. Well, listen, thanks for your time. Thanks for your cake. That's all right. And, and a cup of tea, which the boys got very excited about because they, they managed to capture the steam coming out, which is amazing. And, and, and say if people want more information, there's a website, there's a Facebook page, Twitter account. Just call in and, and pick up some leaflets here at the farm and, uh, and they'll put you, you'll put them to good use. Well, we, we get people coming to buy the honey quite, quite a lot because to have um, fresh local honey that's not been messed around with is, is really nice. And we get people coming that want to go to the bees, to see the bees, go on beekeeping courses. And so I just get people turning up and I take them on tours and tell them about bees and if they want, they can keep them in the garden. I feel a feature coming on in the not too distant future. Kev goes beekeeping. <laughs> Gordon, many thanks for your time. No and many thanks for your cake as well. No problems, I'll get back in there. Yeah, oh yeah, the the boom. Boom. something's yeah. burning quick. <laughs>
Well, apparently we've lost a little bit of audio on that. I can assure you that I'm speaking and saying wonderful things about the Swansea Community Farm and the uh, jar of honey which I've uh, bought and I've already used at home. And it's uh, wonderful for the voice, good, clean, natural uh, honey. So coming up anyway, we'll uh, talk to uh, Steph Pedrick, a good friend and a very, very funny man here on Big TV.
So I just thought I'd make him think the audio dropped out there for a moment. Welcome back to Friday Lunchtime Live here on Bay TV Swansea. Now then, uh, this year's Grand Theatre Panto in Swansea. We are one month away from the start of rehearsals and the opening night some 10 days thereafter. Now every panto has a baddie. The Wicked Stepmother in uh, Cinderella, Jack and the Beanstalk has the Giant's Henchman, Snow White has the Wicked Queen, Peter Pan, Captain Hook, and so on, so on. But the king of the panto bad guys for me is to be found in a Aladdin, that's Abanaza. I'm playing that despicable, despised one this year as Aladdin hits the stage of the Swansea Grand. His bad guy extraordinaire, Steph Pedrick. How are you doing, fella? Not too bad. I am a bad guy extraordinaire, mate. I really am. Yeah, it's nice to be back in Swansea for Panto. I've had a, a year away, so it's nice to be home finally. Was the Giants henchman last time, was it? I was. I was Flesh Creep. Flesh Creep. That's what it was. I couldn't yeah. remember that name. Yeah, with my lasers, and um, yes. they might be coming back this Just year. Sometime lasers. Sometimes yeah. late. They did. Yeah, it was a, a weird one. Like they chose. They were very selective lasers. I, I thought it was good for you as a young, youngish yeah. performer uh, to go away last year to Wolverhampton. It was and, and play a different audience, very yeah. similar theatre to the Swansea Grand, isn't it? I was actually spooked how similar it was. Yeah, absolutely beautiful theatre, and the guys there last year were absolutely incredible. Like obviously Lisa, who you know very yeah. well, yeah. Lisa Riley, and. Yeah, it was nice playing Abanaza. Um, the costume last year was very Ali Bongo. I had sort of MC Hammer trousers. And this year, I think I've just gone for the crow. It's like a long leather jacket. Every time I'm in Swansea, they just give me a leather jacket. Perfect. Mate, that's become the thing. It's a great right? part for you as well because yeah. you start off as a magician. It's that's hard nice. to pigeon yeah. hole. You know, I've battled with that myself sometimes, but you, you reinvent yourself because you want to keep working. I yeah, remember yeah, you yeah. as a young teenager performer, you were a magician. And then you, you did some acting, you did some television. You did an accomplished actor, you've got a, a great singing voice uh, as well, but you're a magician, you're a comedian, and of course, um, sometime Johnny Depp, Captain Jack look alike. Sometimes, yeah, I'd need a lot of makeup and wig and stuff for that. At the moment, I've gone for sort of super tramp, casual tramp. That's what I've got for me. A little bit of a scruff, innit? It's got to be done. Uh, but yeah, always trying to, well, you know what it's like, the business, and you've always got to try and make your own work if uh, nothing's coming in. So, so how did the Jack Sparrow thing start? Really randomly, um, I had a casting uh, for the Young Jack Sparrow Adventures, which never actually came off. It was meant to be like the, the young mini series of the books. This is when I was about 17, 18, and I thought to myself, oh, okay, I kind of look a bit like him. Um, maybe, <laughs> oh, maybe, yeah. Maybe. yeah. Um, so I had like long black hair at, at the time, and then I did a pantomime for Friendship Theatre um, as Jack Sparrow. So I was the captain for Robinson Crusoe, and then I thought, Oh, that went well. I'll try and make a bit of money from this. And then I did. So I, I, every now and again, I'll do a couple of Jack Sparrow gigs, look alike, sound alike. Or I'll do Jack Sparrow magic shows now. So I've incorporated the magic into the act. Um, which is always fun. You get away with so much more mm. as a character, obviously. And you've travelled with that as well, haven't you? Yeah, I've done it um, all over the UK, really, at the moment, um, doing Jack. And it's quite fun because I've got another friend of mine, Stuart, who's a very good Jack Sparrow as well. There's three of us that alternate. So, like... People keep like messaging us. Oh, I saw you at this gig. We're like, no, it's not. It's like the evolution chart of man, but with different sparrows of different ages. <laughs> I'll be Captain Thrush. I'll put it up there. She just yeah. enjoy performing. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Yeah, and no, I just enjoy it. It's great fun. It is great. Sorry, Kev. It's a little bit rude, I, but it's, it's in your mind. I knew a Jeff laughed that we were in trouble there. <laughs> So tell us what you brought in. We've had this. Yeah. I've had this on the chair here right. since uh, since when we came into yeah. the studio uh, just before one o'clock. What's in here? So my magic that I do now is mentalism. So it's sort of Ooh. I'm I'm known as the Aldi Darren Brown. That's my current show. Um, so it's all mind magic and manipulation. I rarely do cards and close up at the moment. So I thought I would try something with you if that's okay. Let's try it. Awesome. Um, I've got a list here of dead singers. A lovely, light-hearted family piece. Uh, it's been Halloween, so I thought we could do something a bit spooky oh. on the aftermath of Halloween. Um, I asked some of your team some names of some deceased singers, and you obviously being a DJ, you've played loads of these iconic stars, and you're really familiar with them. Yes, yes. All you've got to do, Kev, I've got scissors, I've got a piece of paper, and a list of names. All you have to do is shout stop any t at any time, and we'll cut like we're making our own mix. Okay, you can feel free to look away so I don't influence you in any way. It's up to you, you can close your eyes. the chair spin. <laughs> it's like the voice. Awesome. <laughs> right, um, I'm about to start. Which is I'm pretty stupid because I can see oh, you, you can in the monitor there, can't I? It, it, <laughs> go on, I'll cover my eyes. Well you're right, you're right. Okay, my eyes, that's all right. So I'll tell you when I'm about to start, all right, all right, and right. then take your time. Okay, I'm about to start now. Stop. Are you sure? Have you started? I, I have started, are you sure? I can go a bit further. No, go a bit further, go on. 
Stop. Are you sure? Yep, definitely. 100% Stop. this time? Yep. Can I look now? It's too late now, mate, because I've cut it. Have you? So, as long as you're happy. I'm happy. Mate. Okay, happy excellent. Um, please have a look at the top name that we stopped on. It should be at the top, wherever you Oh, yes, it. yeah. yeah. What's at the top? Can I read it out? Yeah, yeah. David Bowie. David Bowie at the top. And please turn to the camera to show uh, there's other names on there as well. And yeah, oh, yeah, there's other names. If you can see. Oh, uh, there we are, there we are. Various other singers. Maybe it's a bit too bright. It's a bit too studio. bright. Please uh, read out some Can I read out to them? Yeah, please. Uh, David Bowie, Elvis, and Nat King Cole. Nat King Cole. Merry old soul. That's what you are. That's what you are. Oh, thanks, mate. <laughs> right, I've got a prediction. Unforgettable. <laughs> Carry on. I love it, mate. You're blasting me away. It's fantastic. Um, please pick up your envelope that's been there the entire time. Now, when the music stops. The music stops, absolutely. Ooh! That's an old school. Oh, that's clever. It's an old school one. Now, I've had this since you give it to me, had this. and you give it to me before people started shouting names. Absolutely. I can confirm that. Um, now, there's um, a play button. I don't know if you can, it should oh, be man, one. That's way to too, I'm scared now that I'll press record that's and delete okay. it. We, we've got a couple of seconds on it. Um, there but it is. you oh, might want to put it next is. to your what microphone as well. I don't know where oh, to hold it. Oh, there we are. There it is there. Okay. There we are, there it is. Excellent. Right, so where do I press? So put it by your microphone so it picks it up. Yeah, uh, which button do I so press? It's the middle button with the play. Just the middle button. Okay, actually. play through the microphone. Yeah. Where's the microphone there? So David Bowie we cut on, was it? Yeah. Okay. Hello, Kev. Hello, everyone at Bay TV. It's Wednesday, and you've just asked me if I'd like to appear on the show on Friday. I accept. In fact, I'm already here. Um, I said I would do a magic trick. So here is my prediction. Hope I got it right. This is ground control. No! Wow! You've really made the grade. You did it. That's oh, good thank stuff. You. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Cheers, mate. We had Jeff on, on backup just in case you went down badly. You, Jess. You're going to bring him in. I call it Jess then. Well done. There we are. We've changed. We, that was how good the magic was. I changed your that's sex. A good trick. Great. Thank you, mate. I like that. Yeah. So that's kind of what I do at the moment. Now, there's no more cards, coins. It's all sort of mind manipulation and NLP type stuff. Uh, nice to panda. You go into a theatre for six weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to go anywhere else. And I love it. And being yeah. home is the best, as you yeah. know very well. Yeah, man, I'm excited. I'm excited yeah. to be back. And you got a little one? I have, yeah, my eight-year-old now, Faye, and she's excited. Uh, she's obsessed with performing as well at the moment, but uh, Annie's her favourite. She doesn't want to be Annie, she wants to be Miss Hannigan. Is it? Oh, no. So, I don't know what to do there. just about to go, the sun will come out tomorrow. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, what, what else are you up to? So You, you write a lot, I don't do. you? Yeah, yeah, in fact, um, there's a project at the moment which I can't say too much about, but I will say it's a comedy. Uh, which is a collaboration with Richard Mylan from Swansea off Waterloo Road. Good boy, Captain yeah, love Rich. Yeah. Uh, me and him have teamed up for a comedy set in Swansea, um, and we're both writing it and both in it. And there's a few other names as well. So that's all I can kind of say. I always got my CV on hand. Absolutely, mate. You know that you're there, mate. Absolutely. <laughs> I'd love to have you. I mean, we, we worked on a. It never got off the ground, but we were, there was a funeral, and we, I was right. the minister. Yeah, that was about three years back. That was that. I was such promise. Just I these know. things happen, though, don't they? That's that's the thing with pilots, and my hair is blonde at the moment for a different pilot, so I'm constantly filming pilots, not like in a cockpit, that would be weird, but you, you know what I mean, Kev. But yeah, so I will find out what happened with that footage, and we'll find it, and we'll chuck it online. Chuck it can. online, yeah, it'd be yeah, great man. to see. I, I felt so. quite responsible. Yeah, it was great. It's great to have you on. You're looking, you. you're looking forward to the panel. Oh, I'm so excited, mate. Yeah. It's gone so quick already yeah. this year. It's be here before we know it now. Last year we had Louis, Louis Spence. Yes, that's right. And, uh, we've got the same director, which is, which is have, great. Yes, wonderful he's man. wonderful. Uh, Michael is a, just a yeah. wonderful director. Oh, so. he's lovely. He's lovely, yeah. man. Yeah, I'm excited to be back with the team. Fantastic. Good. And home for, the, home for Christmas. Yes. Did you get home for Christmas last year or were you stuck I, there? I did have, yeah, just a few, a few hours travelling down and travelling back up. So I made it back for a very few hours. Um, but like my little one came up for some yeah. of the nights and stuff. That was nice. But Fantastic. Yeah. So we open... On the 15th? Yeah, good. I'm glad you knew that because oh, I didn't no. have a clue. So there we are. Great to have Stefan Pedgic. Give him a big round of applause. There we are. Thank I you. love the trick, by the way. Congratulations you, on that. Thank you, buddy. And uh, tell all your friends. That was absolutely fantastic. You were, you were quite stunned, weren't you? Here we are. We've got an extra cameraman in the studio today. 
So there we are, coming up after the break, uh, we always finish the show with uh, some music. And what we've done today is uh, we've just kind of thrown some a medley of some of the, uh, the bands and some of the singers that have really impressed us in uh, recent weeks here on the show on uh, Friday. It's great to encourage young performers from this area who are working hard, gigging around the pubs and the clubs of the area and give them a chance to come on and, and just show what they can do. So uh, we've put a bit of a medley together, uh, some of those today, which I know that you're going to enjoy. So uh, thanks for being with us on the show uh, this, this, more, this afternoon. And of course, we'll be back. I'll be back on Wednesday of uh, next week, uh, sitting in for the normal Wednesday guys here on Bay TV. And I'm really, really looking forward uh, to that. But we'll get some music on this uh, Friday lunchtime live. That's coming up just after the break on this Friday. And once again, well done, Steph. I was well impressed. Yes, You've got to tell me how I you will. did that. You've got you. to I tell me you. how to do it. Fantastic. <laughs> well done. Thank you.
I was on my way to the Cardoma. I thought I was done. The music was going to take us through to the end of the show. And they said, Kev, you forgot to tell us who the singers are. We do like to encourage young singers, as I said earlier on here on the show. So a medley of songs now from Dicey Thomas, Piers Ellison and Sam Cooch to wrap up today's uh, edition of the show. Have a good Friday. Have a great weekend. Come on, the Swans. Sometimes I am right Sometimes I am wrong 
and I'll try to be a better man for you. I'll do all I can. We fall out and we fight. Hatred days forgive the nights, and we lie beside our words. Words are stung. Words that hurt. Ah, two of a saint angel. We breathe fire in sheepskin Though two of us won't change it Cause you're my devil, I'm your sin I love all, trust a few I do no wrong to all be we die fools for words unsaid But we grow wise with faces red Ah, two of us saint angels We breathe fire in sheepskin Though two of us won't change it Cause you're my devil They say hell is empty, devils reign They live amongst the patron saints But heaven is when I'm with you Heaven is the devil's avenue and We ride high, and we ride low Troubles dwell You're my hope and you're my fear Feed the ghost of us with tears Ah, two of us saint angels We breathe fire in sheepskin Though two of us won't change it you're my devil, I'm your sin Sledgehammer This 
This can be my testimony Sledge 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 Open up your fruit cake Cause I will be your honey bee Open up your fruit cage It's the fruit that's as sweet as can be I wanna be Sledgehammer Why don't you call my name? Your sledgehammer This can be my testimony I kick the habit Kick the habit Kick the habit Shed my skin